Good evening. I'm going to call this meeting of the Hardin County Board of Education to order. If everyone will please stand, we'll say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And Mr. Bland, do you have our board commitments? Yes. To improve our effectiveness, the Hardin County Schools Board of Education commits to keep children first, to listen, to be prepared, to be professional, to demonstrate financial stewardship, to represent the entire district and support district goals and support board decisions. Thank you. And now, Mr. Wright, you have our recognitions? Y yes, ma'am. We have a student um, that we're going to recognize, a staff member, uh, and then also uh, we have our Better HCS Better Together Award recognition. So if, you'll, if you guys will pass that resolution, we'll get started. Move we accept the resolution. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Zuri Basso, is Zuri here? Come on up here, young lady. <coughs> Zuri, Zuri is a North Harden. Uh, she gets a medal, um, okay. Mr. Casey. Yeah. Uh, Zuri Basso is a North Harden High School freshman, and she has earned the Yes I Can Award in the area of self advocacy uh, from the Kentucky Council for Exceptional Children. The award acknowledges and celebrates the accomplishments of children and youth with exceptional needs. This is the second year in a row that we've had a winner uh, of the Yes I Can Award, and Zuri has certainly earned that. Congratulations, young lady. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. She earned this as an eighth grader at North Middle, and now she's a freshman at North Harden. Mom, are you mom? Yes, you deserve a hand as well. Thank you, Zuri. We appreciate you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we're ready for our next award, but thanks for coming. We appreciate you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Zuri. All right. Roger Ramsey, come on up here, Chef. This is uh, Chef Roger Ramsey, and if you don't know uh, Chef Ramsey, you, you haven't eaten at EC3 or, or been in that culinary program. Uh, Chef Ramsey is a, just a wonderful person, a wonderful delight, but he is a lead culinary arts pathway instructor at the Hardin County Schools Early College and Career Center. Chef earned the Pro Start National Educator of Excellence Award in Best Practice and Knowledge Sharing at the National Pro Start Conference this summer. Pro Start is part of the National Restaurant Association Educational Foundation. He also earned the Kentucky Pro Start Educator of Excellence Award. Congratulations, Chef. Appreciate you. Chef is a, a dynamic cook, and he, uh, chef rather, and he, uh, he really helps those students succeed. If you haven't been there and, and watched him do that, uh, he does an amazing job. <laughs> Leah Reynolds, come on up, Miss Reynolds, Miss Leah. Now, uh, she gets a medal too because I, I, I made an error on her plaque, and I told, I told Leah that just a second ago, but, and I'll get her her plaque. But Leah is a North Harden High School senior. She's a very active student. She's part of the Hardin County Schools Culinary Arts Pathway, located at the Early College and Career Center, one of Chef Ramsey's students. At the ripe age of 15, she became the lead baker for local restaurant Buy Coffee. When she applied for a job there, it was for a barista position, but knowing that she had a passion for baking, the coffee shop had a vacancy in that position, and the owners quickly elevated her to the lead baker. She also finished first and second in Skills USA competitions and has been a part of the state Pro Start Invitational Culinary Teams under Chef Ramsey's leadership that represented Kentucky at the National Pro Start Competition. Leah earned a blue ribbon at the Kentucky State Fair in the 4-H Cupcake Competition. She plans to further her culinary education at Sullivan University. Awesome. Thank you, Leah. We appreciate it. <laughs> and mom and dad are here as well. Ma, all right. Thank you, guys. We appreciate you as well. Okay, Allie Trombley. Come on up, Miss Allie. She has a plaque there, Mr. Casey. Allie is a Radcliffe Elementary School interventionist. Is described by her principal, Lisa Sturman, as having the foundational characteristics of a teacher, passion, innovation, and determination. 
She began her time at Radcliffe teaching first grade. She quickly uh, became the team leader and guided her team to new and innovative practices. Allie acknowledged academic def deficits in her students and immediately determined effective interventions for her students uh, in other first grade, uh, for students in other first grade classrooms. She was a natural choice for interventionists, Ms. Uh, Sturman says, because of a, it is a role in which she's demonstrated exceptional leadership. Ms. Trombley has been instrumental in changing the way support systems are implemented at Radcliffe Elementary. She has led efforts to inform, train, and assist teachers as they put effective interventions in place. She continues to be an active committee member and mentors new teachers. Regardless of the task, Ms. Trombley is consistently willing to lend her energy. Ms. Sturman emphasizes that she and her administrative team are honored to have her on staff and are proud to serve with the students of Radcliffe Elementary alongside her. Thank you. We appreciate you. <laughs> All right, so last month we gave the Better Together, or uh, one of the Better Together awards to Trinity Searcy and Kevin Addington. They, um, they thought they were getting the award this month, and they are. So we're, we're going to give them uh, the award again this month. But then neither one of them could be here. So they have sent two guys, come on up, uh, two gentlemen, and we're going to have them introduce themselves when they, when they get up here. They didn't know they were going to have to speak, but all you have to do is introduce yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So they work, I believe you guys work with Trinity, right? Okay, work with Trinity Searcy, and you are? Okay. All right, now these guys not only work for uh, Trinity, uh, but uh, Trinity Searcy, along with Kevin Addington, they were critical in helping North Park Elementary School, and Ms. Laura Beth Hayes is here tonight, prepare for the new school year. Mr. Searcy owns Carbeck, which you guys work for, um, an equipment solution firm devoted some of his crew members, aha, uh -huh, <laughs> to mow, trim, and spread mulch. He also contacted Mr. Addington, owner of Addington Transportation, who brought in equipment to move and spread mulch. They have no ties to the school, right, guys? All right, other than just hearing that Mrs. Hayes had a need. So Mr. Searcy surprised, um, Mr. Searcy surprised Mrs. Hayes by initiating this work. So thank you, gentlemen. We appreciate your sweat thank equity. You. Thank you. And Ms. Hayes does as well, so and thank where, you all. Wherever their parents are, they did a good job. Yes, they did. They did a great <laughs> job. You're right, Mr. C.O. All right, thank you, Ms. Johnson. Thank you. All right, and Mr. Sutton, focus on academics. Yeah, you know when we get a chance to showcase our teachers, we always uh, love to do that. Last month, remember, we had Dana Garrett here from Central Harden High School showing us our project-based learning. Well, we're going to give you the opposite of that this week, and we've got Amy Waits from North Harden High School, and she's going to be showcasing problem-based learning, how we engage students and students in learning opportunities through math. So I'm going to call Ms. Waits up here. She's one of our great teachers here at North Harden and Harden County Schools. So come on up, and we're going to put the presentation on the board up here for you. We're not having a test, are we? <laughs> no <laughs> test tonight. <laughs> nothing like that. Um, good evening. My name is Amy Waits. Um, this is my third year in Harden County Schools. Um, I'm from the area in general. Um, I graduated. Don't don't like say anything or whatever. But I graduated from from Meade County. Um, glad to be back in the area and um, glad to be here. Um, so I'm going to talk tonight about the difference between uh, problem-based and project-based learning. Um, there is a little bit of a difference there. Um, you probably heard last month in project-based learning, um, they take a, uh, something to make a project out of it. It's a little bit longer, lengthy thing that they end up doing. Um, the students will end up creating some kind of visual that ends up uh, being presented in some manner. Um, for problem-based learning, it's a little bit shorter amount of time. Um, it's dealing with obviously a problem versus a project. Um, the kids are going to apply their skills to develop some kind of solution. Um, and that's kind of the main difference there where um, some similarities, we're still doing learner center practices and um, encouraging critical thinking uh, for students. Uh, I'm gonna talk tonight about a project that, or a problem that I did with my students. And here's just kind of looking at the differences between what I would normally do and what I did for this problem. Um, the problem is on a law of sines and law of cosines. Traditionally, we would start with just talking about how to work those problems, how to do everything, um, and usually take a test or an assessment. There would probably be some um, application at the end, uh, where in this case, what we did is we started out with a problem talking about dinosaurs. Um, I mean, who, who in here has a favorite dinosaur, right? <laughs> Everybody's got a favorite dinosaur. 
Um, so we just started with that and um, started with that particular problem, and I'll take, tell you a little bit about that in a minute, but went with um, the kids then discovered that they didn't know enough to answer the question that I proposed to them about the dinosaurs. And we still ended up addressing the same standards, and we still assessed at the end, but just the way it came about was in a different way. Uh, these are the standards that were covered in this uh, particular problem. Uh, we not only we t had just finished talking about right triangles and we're moving into law of sines and cosines. I don't know if you guys remember that from your high school years or not, probably oh, yeah. not. Um, but what law of sines and law of cosines does is it talks about how to find particular um, things without a right triangle happening. Um, and so we needed more information to figure out our problem. So usually when you start with um, problem-based learning, you may have seen this last month, um, you, we want to begin with the end in mind. We have a planning form that we've been using. Uh, we design the problem scenario, we figure out what's happening, and we plan the assessment. Really not much different than what we normally do. Um, NTN has given us some very good forms, though, to use to kind of guide our thinking and to concentrate our thinking into more learner-centered versus just, here it is, let's do the problem. Uh, NTN, New Tech? New Tech, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so I started out with just talking about dinosaurs in general. Um, you wouldn't believe the amount of kids were like, I love dinosaurs, even though they're in high school. Um, and started talking about different things. But I found a problem where um, basically it was around paleontology. And it was a true problem that I found. I did some more research on it and found that it was actually true. I found it in one of our books. And what they can do is you can, if you find the angle between a dinosaur's footprints, you can actually determine what kind of dinosaur it was. Was it a um, bipedal dinosaur? Did it walk on all fours? Whatever. And uh, so that's where I started with them. So these are some of the slides that I presented to the kids. Um, they had to determine what is called a pace angle. And if you notice there, that angle is not a right angle. And so um, what they had to do is just start looking at it and see if they could figure it out. <clears throat> So um, what the problem was is the closer that that angle that they find is closer to 180, that is the, um, where a dinosaur can walk better, which means he's probably bipedal versus four, four legs. Um, and so like I said, these are just some of the slides that I showed the kids um, to help them see what they needed to find. Well, we started with after that, after I gave them the information, um, this is what I normally do in my classes a lot. We talk about what we know and what we need to know. And uh, there were lots of we need to knows. They were like, well, well we can't find this with what we've already done. Um, and so that's where we started our process. So not only did we, you know, not, not do just a problem where we talk about dinosaurs, which is great, but, you know, uh, we also did different activities in class. Not only did we do um, just some worksheets, some guided activities, but we also did some inquiry and also some um, additional application. So there's some of the students actually doing the work. Um, I didn't get as many of the group things. I was helping them and didn't get many pictures of that. But um, the kids were doing some research on what they needed to do. Um, that little purple dinosaur there. Uh, I'll tell you a little story about that one. Um, <laughs> I brought in dinosaurs from my son. He's eight. Um, I brought in Lego dinosaurs because you can actually, even with Lego, you can see if a two-footed dinosaur can walk a certain way versus a four-footed dinosaur. Um, this problem ended up just kind of exploding in my room, which was great. And it was very student-led in the whole way. And this little purple dinosaur, I still have it. I forgot to bring it tonight. But this little purple dinosaur is like, was huge in my room. So we ended up using all the dinosaurs as talking pieces when they were in groups. Um, and that particular dinosaur, kids were running into my room to get that dinosaur. They loved that dinosaur. So they were fighting over who was going to get that dinosaur for the day. So I just had to tell you a little story about that one. <coughs> Um, not only did we finally learn that we could find the pace angle, um, but we also had a community partner come in and present. Um, one of our new tech coaches is in Texas, and she is near fossil beds. And she actually presented to us about um, where they're found and how they're found and what they do with them and everything else. So there's some student work there. Um, the students actually, I gave them a picture of um, those uh, dinosaur footprints. They actually, we gave them some information, and through all of this process, they actually found 
uh, what the pace angle was. They had to look and see what kind of dinosaur it was. So not only did they figure that out, they actually did some research on what other kind of dinosaurs could have this and everything else. That it? Yeah, that's it. Fantastic. So I'd like for the board members to turn your book to page 20, do 20 <laughs> math problems. The odd answers are in the back of the book. How many of y'all remember that? Oh, yeah. Well, we all did it, didn't we? Oh, yeah. Could you tell if the dinosaur had been in the bar or out of the bar? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, the, that's a different kind that of thing. That would be a different exactly. problem that we had, but yeah. You guys have any questions or anything? Pretty neat. Uh, what I really liked is it, it really... Um, helped with um, just students being involved in the classroom, mm -hmm. not just being a bystander. Um, and, and that's what I do a lot in my classroom in general, but this one just was really a great one to share. One of the uh, math teachers from Bluegrass who started this NTN process, uh, that teacher gave an assessment on math, doing it the way you did here, not necessarily with dinosaurs, compared to past year's common assessments. and. The retention with doing activities like this was much stronger than that page 20. Let's do 20 of those. So thank you for Great. trying it, especially in math, because we're finding that kids are having a difficulty having a meaningful experience. So thank you for making that happen. And what I want to remind the board, that the two lessons you saw the last two months with Dana Garrett, the, the civics unit, now the math unit here at North Arden, we're placing them on a HCS collaboration collection site. Uh, by grade level, by content area. They're, they're creating these lessons together amongst our schools and amongst our teachers. So every teacher in the district that teaches the same content she does will have access to this lesson. So it doesn't have to be just North Harden students having this opportunity or Central Harden students having the civics opportunity. We're working together to make this happen. So I, I want you to see that site. It's, a, it's growing. Miss New will present that to us hopefully in the next month or two, the early stages of it, so you get a chance to see how we're building the process. You did a great job. So I, I have a question. Yeah. The, uh, you, sh you showed uh, one of the slides. You showed some of the resources that that were available to them. The, the uh, law of cosines, uh, law of sines and cosines crib sheet there with uh, all the formulas on there. Did you, is that on the collaboration side? That yeah, back uh, there, that one, the one on the upper right. The upper right. Um, is that something that's just? I mean, that's kind of what I've seen before. <laughs> that is from Action Teachers Pay Teachers. Um, I like to have kids be able to um, check themselves if they are doing work like that, like yeah. kind of more bookish problems. Um, but uh, when we put this on the HCS site, there will be links to all so of the, that, that access to everything, so, not just okay. the problem itself, not just what I presented to you, but, but, the, but the everything that was used. But the outside materials are linked in? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's yeah. great. That's a great resource. Yep. So that means, you know, we're <laughs> Okay. You can okay. tell them where to get the purple dinosaur. Well, that's important. It's Lego. I don't know. I don't. Know. My son will not share. I like I said. I forgot it today because I left it on the counter. Because he was like, "You can't bring it until it's until it's time." Like, because I had it on the counter for a couple of days. He's like, "No, I I need it to be back." So, I left it. Today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank if it's Legos, it's expensive. <laughs> Departmental update, buildings and grounds. Good evening. I'm Joe Stucker, Director of Buildings and Grounds, and with me tonight is Jamie Hawkins, our maintenance supervisor. Uh, we'll kind of go over a few things here real quick. So buildings and grounds, our office staff is, is five folks. Uh, we have tw uh, two district-wide custodians, we have 12 substitute custodians, two maintenance helpers, two general maintenance, three carpenters, two electricians. Oh, they're on there twice, so <laughs> four electricians now. Uh, two HVAC, uh, one kitchen maintenance, two plumbers, two preventative maintenance. So our maintenance staff is about 16, and our custodial staff is 14. Office staff is five. Um, I like to, uh, you know, ha have a mission. And um, our mission is maintain a safe, energy efficient, and healthy environment that is conducive to teaching and learning for all students and staff of Hardin County Schools. Provide a continuous program of repair, replacement, installation, and modification of the district's facilities. That's something that, you know, we, we live by. Um, you know, our, our crew, one thing that we stress is that we're not just there to repair this problem. 
or um, you know, replace this, this part. We're a part of the education process. You know, we, we are the ones that, that we have to have the buildings in good shape for the students. We have to have them comfortable uh, in the buildings. We have to have them safe. And those are the things that we really focus on and, and we, we really um, uh, celebrate with our crew. I'll let you go ahead. I'm gonna give a little bit of a report on uh, some of the work orders and numbers that Buildings and Grounds has done over the past year or so. Uh, as you can see right there at the top, uh, last school year, uh, there was 4,800 uh, initial work orders put in. We kind of look at everybody's work order as the number one priority. The only thing is, is we had 4,800 of them last year. Uh, and I, and I want to recognize some of our crew today uh, I'm going to start, you know, with some of the staff in our maintenance department. But last physical year is, you know, we, we talked about the 4,800. You know, that was received, but we also completed 4,775. So far this school year, just since the first week of uh, August, we've received nearly 2,000. And, and have already completed 1,862 of them. Uh, this does not include the mowing, the preventive maintenance, and the considerable amount of the of moving the school equipment around the district. We have, we've set goals. Uh, me and Joe really did some study when it come to you know our facilitron. And, you know we get a lot of good feedback on that. But you know I studied about three years worth of work orders, and we set goals. You know it's always been 180 to 200 work orders open at any given time, and that, everybody thinks that's a high number but we've got 16 guys. Uh, this past week, it's been the lowest that I've seen it since I've been part of the maintenance department. Uh, we hit 102 open work orders and that's out of already receiving 2,000. So I just wanna, wanted to say that, you know, we're, our department's going in the right direction. You know, we, we've had some really good guys come in to help out and, and our team's really coming together. So I just wanted to mention that. But setting them goals, uh, we give a goal to the guys kind of to push them a little bit and, and we've accomplished that goal. Uh, now we got to set the bar, I guess, a little bit higher, push them a little bit more. Um, but we really do have a team that cares about our schools and the safety of our buildings and the students and staff. Just to mention some of our staff, Carpenter, Scott Booker, Greg Hallett, Brian Varney, and Brandon Irvin, they've recently been uh, changing a lot of the door hardware out, really checking the security of the buildings, been uh, installing the safes in the SRO offices, and uh, we've also been putting more signs out. John's really been helping us get a lot more signs to install on the buildings. So I want to recognize them guys then the electricians, Steve Carver and Lyndall Hornberger. Uh, they've recently been doing building upgrades to LED. Uh, we're trying to, you know, upgrade our buildings. Uh, we've recently done JTA and we're in the process of retrofitting Lakewood and some of the other schools is, as some of the light fixtures and stuff come in, we try to, instead of just replacing the bulbs, we try to go ahead and retrofit as they come along. And uh, they've also been helping out with John Harden, uh, removing old kitchen equipment, installing new kitchen equipment. So they've really been helping out in that area too. Then our plumbers, these guys probably see more work orders than anybody. Uh, I don't have the number in front of me, but Bradley Skies and Tim Coolidge, uh, they're currently going through the, the district and replacing faucets, trying to get our, uh, labor costs down and upgrade some of our faucets, so hopefully cut down on some of these work orders. And they're also our ground crew. So not only are, do our plumbers get more work orders than anybody, they also do more dirt work than anybody because we don't have anybody else that can do that. So I want to recognize them guys. And our HVAC team, uh, Jennings Cross and Dave Wolford, they're doing a great job keeping up with the, the demand and you know keeping up with keeping work orders down and, you know, keeping everybody comfortable. Everybody likes to be comfortable. And, you know, we've called on them to do change outs. Uh, 
Uh, recently, they've replaced a unit at New Highland for the office area. Uh, they replaced a unit at Buildings and Grounds. That's a huge savings we don't, when we don't have to call a contractor. So I want to, you know, lift them guys up too. Then pre preventive maintenance, Mike Rutledge and Rick Arms, you know, their, their job never stops. You know, that's another job that uh, there's not work orders for to, to grease pumps and, you know, keep motors going. And, you know, that's just, you know, that preventive maintenance side, you know, we could, we could keep six guys busy year round on preventive maintenance. But they do a really good job. Not to mention, they also get work orders. Then uh, recently, uh, we got a new maintenance technician in the kitchen, Jeremy Taylor. Man, he's hit the ground running. Uh, he's doing a fabulous job. He's brought knowledge to the district, you know, that a lot of us haven't had in, you know, in the refrigeration side of it on the kitchen side. So he's doing a really, really nice job. So I want to, you know, been here a month and a half. I really want to give him props on what he's done. Then our general maintenance and grounds crew, Matt Hash, Bob Carter, Brandon Ambler, and Scott Booker. These guys get work done without a work order. You know, these are the guys that's keeping up with our grounds, mowing. Uh, they're the ones we call on to, for everything that needs to be moved. So, you know, anytime we call on them, they're there. And they, they're also, I'm gonna knock on wood a little bit, they do the snow removal too. So <laughs> hopefully we don't have to deal with that. They've been slow on that. <laughs> we, we like to keep it that way. So now we're going to get into the staff at Buildings and Grounds. Kyle Lucas, our energy man, manager, I mean, he is second to none when it comes to scheduling changes. Temperature changes, he's part of the green team. He's basically our help desk at, you know, Buildings and Grounds. He knows a lot about, you know, HVAC control, stuff that we would normally have to call, you know, a contractor. He, he's our, like I said, he's our go-to on the control side of it. So definitely want to rec recognize him. He's already made over 1,900 schedule changes since school started. So his job's at home a lot, making schedule changes. And also 150 temperature changes. He's a huge asset to our district. Jamie Goodman, he's done a fantastic job since he's come into the custodial supervisor position. Uh, he's made a great effort if you all seen before our custodial warehouse, it was a wreck. I think we could eat off the floor <laughs> back there now, so I, I want to give him props on that. He's done a great job. I mean, you know, organizing our warehouse. Uh, we're starting to have barcodes on stuff so we can keep up with what we have in stock. Uh, he's done a, a really good job. Now, he might be making some of the custodians mad, but now he's doing his building checks and writing reports. So he's really doing a great job trying to make our schools look the best and, and keep them healthy. And last but not least, Dana Filburn. You know, she does an awesome job keeping up with her $2.5 million budget, $550,000 custodial budget, and nearly 10, 000, or 2,000 invoices per year. She, and she's everybody's backup inside the office. Joe's gone, she's Joe. I'm gone, she's me. If we're all gone, she's everybody. So I would just want to give her props because she does a lot. She's, she's everybody else's go-to as well. And I just want to say I can't thank the Buildings of Ground enough for their hard work and dedication to HCS. We help maintain roughly 2.5 million square foot of buildings, 800 acres. We are low in numbers, but we are very efficient. I just want to, you know, give them props for what they do. Thank you, sir. Uh, so, so real quick, just a, just a couple slides. So we have here, a, a, just, this is just an example of a work order that came in and uh, it's for the kitchen. And we've got the, the action there of, of what uh, Mr. Taylor did uh, on site there. So we can go back and look in the future and see what we did, what we worked on. Um, He's got his uh, hours in there so we can kind of keep a running log on how long it took. The uh, goal is to, to be able to look back at the end of the year and say, okay, this piece of equipment, we worked on this piece four times and we have 16 hours in on this piece of equipment. Um, 
it's better than saying, okay, so what do we need to replace? Well, we need to replace this. We've worked on it before. This way we have hard numbers, numbers that, you know, make sense. Go ahead, sir. Uh, not really going to hit this slide much, but this is a lot of what Jamie talked about, safe, energy efficient, healthy buildings, uh, secure schools, energy efficient schools. You can see some things that, that we do there uh, and, and work on. You can get a picture of Kyle there greeting students. Okay. Uh, going into that farther uh, on the healthy school side, it's kind of twofold. Uh, J uh, Jamie Goodman with his custodial inspections, custodial training. You see a picture there of custodial training this summer. Um, increased cleanliness. We've got new equipment. We've got new products and better procedures. Uh, helping keep students in the building. Also, we had uh, outside air, ventilation, and our PM guys working to keep everything healthy. Uh, projects and duties, you know, that we run into uh, school-wide lock change outs. Like we were talking about, we're getting all of our schools on, on best locks. Everyone is on best locks now except for uh, Central, for obvious reasons. Uh, LED lighting upgrades, HVAC replacement, plumbing replacement, site work, uh, district grounds maintenance. We're also emergency response when there's an issue there. Uh, moving in the district, uh, PM of all district equipment, repair, replacement, and maintenance of all kitchen equipment, and we do the annual Christmas in the Park display. That we're, we, we love it, we love it. It's, it's so much fun for the guys. <laughs> um, they, it's a, it's a break from them for their, from their daily work orders and they get out there and they have a great time and they come back and they're in the Christmas spirit. <laughs> Even though we have a running <coughs> joke with, with them that, uh, superintendent said that they have to wear, uh, elf ears and Santa hats. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we we're tell in, them. We're adding shoes this year. That sounds good. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll make sure I tell them that. Okay. Uh, some of the inspections that we do throughout the district. So uh, some of these are with us, some of these are, are from uh, third-party contractors, but uh, elevator inspection, inspections, boiler inspections, asbestos inspections, sprinkler, fire alarm, fire extinguisher, exhaust hood, bleachers, sewer lift stations, uh, again, Jamie Goodman with the custodial inspections, and the safe school assessments that look at the, the entire school. Those are things that we focus on. Um, Kind of some fun pictures here, but you know what what I want you to take away from this is that our our goal at buildings and grounds what matters most is safe schools for students, efficient schools for uh, the, the district, and healthy schools for the students as well. So we got a picture there with uh, with our crew from a year or two ago with Dean Kuhn as Santa Claus, and then we have a retirement lunch picture there and. Jennings Cross, working on HVAC, had a rough day. His hair's normally not like that. <laughs> he did not get electrocuted. Just let no. that <laughs> No. Uh, any questions for us? No. That's awesome. Wow. We need students co-oping in our program. We don't right now. Um, we have had a co-op student in the office this multiple week. times. Uh, and that's a big thing. So when I, when I came to this position uh, almost seven years ago, all of our blueprints were paper. They were just stacks and rolls of paper. I could lay them out on the floor and cover the entire floor. Uh, so we need to get those digitized. And we priced it out and it was absurd. Yes. But we bought a large scale printer scanner and we've had different students come into co-op that have scanned drawings, scanned drawings, scanned drawings. And uh, it's been great for us. It's been invaluable. They have been a huge asset to us. Um, the student that we had last year is uh, now going to architecture school. Now, I didn't really have anything to do with what she was doing for us, but it was really neat having somebody in there that had a passion for it, that could look at drawings and understand things. Um, and actually, it was a, her being with us really worked out well for her and for us because we were able to get her set up with JRA and she was able to go up and shadow some of them and, and, and work with those folks. Um, she was able to get involved in, in different projects. Yeah. Uh, we have had a co-op maintenance student, uh, was that last year, I believe, two years ago? But we did have a co-op maintenance student who, who, did, who did really good for us as well. So we could have someone paying through our program. We do, yes. Yeah. That's uh, very possible to get some good hands-on students in some programs out there. Yes. And keep them. It's, it's, it, it can be difficult, um, 
with with the hours that we work right. and the time that we have, um, with getting a student in and, and getting the most benefit for them. You know, if, if they're not able to get there until later on in the afternoon, there's quite a bit that's missed. But we, we work with them, work around their schedule, and do everything we can to, to get them in there. We actually had a young man come in this, this week, a co-op, wanting to see about doing some things. So that was just yesterday, I believe. Oh, I, I didn't realize so. that. Well, that's good. <laughs> well, we need to get that going. Yes. There's some good students out there that, you know, they, they like hands-on work. And yep. Yes. That's a lot of involvement. Yeah. Yes. Yep. All right. Very good. Thank you. Awesome. Thank, Thank you both. You guys. Appreciate it. I think we've got some of the best looking schools out there and uh, even, even some of our older ones, they make look really good and keep, keep well uh, in good shape. And be Mr. Stucker's last uh, board meeting with us and we're gonna miss him greatly. He's done a fantastic job for us. So uh, we, will, we will miss him. All right, we do not have any visitors signed up. And for our construction updates, we had an update from our uh, architects today. Um, overall, things on track and running well. Um, they uh, were told that Central is still on schedule um, with phase one hopefully uh, being done next May. And the uh, big, biggest thing right now is to make sure that we get under roof uh, hopefully by the end of the year. <coughs> and then that will uh, hopefully keep keep running along and then other great news was our issues that we had at Woodland uh, with with the trusses there got the repairs are done uh, and all of that is good to go and we appreciate everybody that pitched in and got that done so quickly for us could have been a much bigger problem <laughs> all right on the consent agenda, it's fairly short this month. Uh, financial services, we received the monthly financial reports, orders of the treasurer, um, approval of the SFCC fiscal year 24 KETS offer of assistance, approval of a $2,000 donation from the Alpha Omega Sigma chapter Fort Knox to the HCS Family Stability Program. Thank for the you. purpose of assisting students and their families. Always uh, appreciate that very much. Um, anybody else wanting to make a donation, we're always always happy <laughs> to take those, but we, we appreciate that from them. Um, approval of some change orders at, with their turf projects and uh, Central Harden dugout, and then receive some information on I-3 funding for capital projects. We have our certified and classified personnel actions, um, uh, approve a job class change from 7463 Director 2 to 7463 Director 1 for buildings and grounds. And we received our SBDM minutes, PAC information, and uh, board meeting minutes. Is there anything anybody would like to discuss, pull out, change? So I uh, move that we accept the consent agenda as uh, as constructed. I'll, I'll second. I'll, I'll more second. <laughs> I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And I do not believe we have any action items. Mm -hmm. No new business. And that brings us to our superintendent's report. Awesome. Just so you know, if we get out of here early, they were had a working session today of three and a half hours so <laughs> this is the second meeting of the day but uh, much like our buildings and grounds um, over fall break I had the opportunity thanks uh, to Chief Thompson Elizabeth T uh, town chief of police um, asked if I could go and visit um, a school district in uh, Florida by the name of Parkland School. Most of you will probably immediately know that's where 17 students lost their lives and 17 others were injured. And the visit, while beyond humbling, uh, it was very educational, but it was also incredibly rewarding uh, to be proud in Kentucky. If you look at national uh, data, 
Kentucky is considered third in the nation on safe schools. Our legislators uh, deserve uh, compliments on the attention that they have given to it. Now, we'd be like for that to be followed by funding. Yes, uh, we would. Uh, but many of these schools have never practiced safe schools. When I spoke that I was from Kentucky or Ben Wilcox spoke that he was from Kentucky, they came over, they wanted to know about our rules, they wanted to know if we could share items, uh, things such as uh, checking visitors into the schools, doors being locked at all times. Uh, today is a perfect example. We have safety visits from the state. They visited multiple schools. We were at Radcliffe and the safety officer came in. Our SROs are doing a phenomenal job. We have Officer Gillingham here tonight, but they are checking our cameras on a monthly basis uh, to make sure that we have minute to minute uh, accountability of our hallways and outside of the buildings in our schools and then just the people inside our schools. Uh, the two things I've shared with our uh, staff in the past two days, our principals and assistant principals, is to make sure everyone knows they have a voice. Uh, it could be the custodian standing outside the building, it could be somebody from buildings and grounds, child nutrition worker, teacher, assistant, but they all have the opportunity to respond in a very powerful way without neglecting uh, what needs to be done. Uh, the Parkland, uh, they invited us there for the simple, not simple, but the very complex of the number of fails that they had in that school on that day, and they there are numerous ones. Uh, but parents, I will tell you, we are very proud of the safety we have here in Hardin County. We appreciate our SROs and the state uh, for keeping us safe. So after that visit, it just made me more confident. Um, and we will continue to focus on safety and we will continue uh, to improve each and every day. So uh, we thank everyone for making that happen. And also, when I talked about a voice, uh, we have had multiple situations this year, not serious situations, but our students, when they saw something, they said something. They contacted our stop line, which you can go to our district website. All of our schools will be sending home magnets this week that have the stop phone number and the link that you can go to, but we have had multiple situations reported so that we could immediately research those. Some of those were th threats to self, to where we could make sure those students were getting the health uh, and um, mental health facility that they need. Um, so again, just very impressed with what we have happening in our district and each day we'll strive to continue improving on that as well. So that's it. Thank you very much. And I, I feel like we hear a lot from outside sources that we're, uh, we've got a lot of good things in place, but I also like that we're we're not just sitting back and saying that we're good. We're continuing to work on it. And yeah, they did speak that more. complacency is probably your number one problem in schools is when you begin to be complacent and think it will never happen here. That's when you're at greatest risk. All right. Thank you. We do not need an executive session. No, ma'am. Board calendar, October 26th is KSBA fourth region meeting in Nelson County. Um, November 6th, FDEA offices closed. November 7th, election day, schools dismissed. And then November 16th will be our next board meeting. We'll have a special lunch board meeting, uh, just because we had to switch a couple schools um, this month and next, at Creekside Elementary, and then our regular evening board <laughs> meeting back here at Central Office. Ben took notes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I took we are going to Creekside yeah. this time. Don't go to right I, I pre-warmed the path. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the wrong school today. Uh, it happens got, to the best of us. I've done And the worst of us. <laughs> you, got to, you got to cross the whole county today. Yeah, it's I'm a big county. Too. It is a big county. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. If there's nothing else. Motion to adjourn. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries.
Thank and you all for coming off out. To Fort you. Knox High School to support Central Harden Bruins in the finals yes, sir, of the district tournament volleyball. Yeah.